Hi, it's Chris Blue NZ here. Um, just wanting to comment, uh, make a video response to uh, Grappling Ignorance's uh, Three Tales for Morality. <coughs> Grappling, I Grappling Ignorance's uh, Three Morality Tales. Obviously, I saw the saw his um, second video, and I understand the point he was trying to get at, and I think he did it pretty well. Of course, um, quite subtle. Took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on. I was, <laughs> it was just quite funny watching the response to his um, second video, but um, I just thought I'd turn the tables back on him and actually continue to um, make a video response to it in terms of the original question, which is the morality of the people involved in those stories. So, <clears throat> nice. Um, I, like, I like what um, what you've done, Grappling Ignorance, with um, <clears throat> turning into a, turning it into a parody, um, fundamentalist parody. Um, but just taking the stories, I think it's interesting to think about and to talk about um, the issues that those stories raise. Definitely, um, I did do a response before I found out what the whole plan of your your scheme was, but. Um, <clears throat> It wasn't very good, so I didn't bother uploading it. But, um, so I guess this is what I think about your morality stories. Whoop. Um, there's the woman walking home from the gym at night, um, and the black couple move into the white neighbourhood, and the serial child murderer slash cannibal. So, starting with those in order, uh, starting with the first one. Well, yeah, that was an interesting story. Um, I think the way it's told, some sympathy for the the girl, um, but <coughs> it doesn't seem like a very plausible or sensible story to me because um, I think none of the, neither of the people involved in the story behaved very sensibly. The man who was chasing her obviously should have called out to her. If she could hear him panting, then obviously she'd be able to hear him calling. All he just need to call is, hey, you dropped this. Something like that. Um, then the woman, <clears throat> um, if she was afraid she was being followed, she should have stopped and sort of got her knife ready if she felt inclined to, um, hidden or something like that. And just the guy would have stopped and talked to her. Um, and in any case, I, as far as making a morality call on her actions and turning around and stabbing the guy in the throat with her knife, without even well, just without doing any of those logical things that you would think someone would think to do before just turning around and stabbing out at somebody. Um, I don't think she was morally right in the right to do that, obviously. Um, and I'm sure she would, if, if if this was a real story, the woman on reflection afterwards would, would say, of course, I shouldn't have done it. So from that point of view, the story is a bit silly, but... Um, <clears throat> I think there's a lot made, and the story makes a lot of the young woman's um, experiences growing up, and obviously that that is going to be a factor in how she behaves. She was obviously very scared. That's um, yeah, but I still think yeah, I, I still think that no matter what has happened to her in her life, she can be judged by uh, reasonable moral standards, and her behaviour, judging. Her behaviour in that story to me is not morally acceptable, um, despite the fact that there may be good reasons behind it. Uh, I think, um, I don't want to say the word slippery slope, but I think um, it's not <sighs> saying that saying that a person who does something when they're not in control of their uh, faculties or when they can't help it for some reason, um, is guilt is not guilty, or guilty not guilty by reason of insanity or temporary insanity or whatever it is. Those all of those ideas are kind of overlooking the basic facts of the matter. Like this person, if this person has killed somebody, you know this person has killed somebody. Yep. Okay. She was very frightened. She didn't know what to do. She freaked out. She used bad judgment, but. All of those are, all of those are circumstances, but the fact is that she has killed a person, and that would be what she would feel as well. Uh, and I think, <clears throat> yeah, I think I think people can be judged by their behaviour, and if you can judge somebody by their behaviour, then you can say that certain behaviours are not acceptable, regardless of what reasons might have caused them. 
and I don't intend to demean um, rape or uh, uh, the effects of rape and um, sexual abuse from her parents because I know that's, <clears throat> I mean I don't know from experience but I, I believe that it's a big thing and um, and I honestly don't feel that I can put myself in that woman's position to be perfectly honest because I've never been in that situa those situations in my childhood. I don't have uh, familiarity with how you'd feel, you know, it, change, it would change a lot of things in your life. But I still think that you can judge a person's morality by their behaviour, well, sorry, I do. I still think that a person can do something which is not, I mean, I think in her case she has done something immoral and wrong in a, moral, in a moral sense and she can be judged on that basis. The other information is relevant and uh, circumstantial, but uh, she has to be judged by her behaviour, everybody has to be judged by their behaviour, because ultimately you can't, um, the simple fact is you can't let dangerous people roam, roam the streets, I guess is the simple answer to that. Anyway, the second story was about the, um, the black couple or a black man and a Hispanic woman I think who move into a, a very predominantly white neighbourhood and uh, most of the neighbours aren't interested in talking to them, they make excuses, close the doors in their face, that, that kind of thing. But there's one couple there who welcome them in, they're a bit um, nervous and, and so on, but they get to know the couple and they, they become good friends and they introduce the couple to the neighbours and everybody lives happily ever after and it's great and that is... Um, just, uh, <laughs> I get it now. I'm starting to get the point of why, um, yeah, I'm starting to get the point of why Grappling Ignorance made the video and chose that story because it's a story that just seems to have a, mo a simple moral to it, um, unlike the other two, which are actually about exciting and unusual things. But obviously, the moral, the good moral in that is that you need to be, try to fight your natural instinct to um, be distrustful of outsiders when they come in because we're living in a world now where pretty much everybody's an outsider. I mean our neighbours have only been here a few years and um, you meet people from all cultures and in your work and in the street so um, try, being distrustful of outsiders is not usually very good for society, I guess you could put, you could say. Um, okay, so that's number two off the list, and number three is about a man who um, serially kills and eats children. Rather lovely. Um, he uh, keeps the bits in his freezer in his basement or wherever it is, um, and uh, every once in a while, when he feels like a little bit of a bit of arm or something like that, there's no arm in that. Ah. Uh, um, takes it out of the freezer and f fries it up or microwaves it or whatever you do with human flesh um, and um, he's very careful and he uh, the police come to inspect his house at one stage when they're just getting desperate and they can't find this who the who it is that's doing these things and they let, he lets them welcomes them in and they go through everywhere but they don't find the bits in his fridge because they're covered with other bits of vegetables and other things and in the end when he dies of natural causes um, he wills the fridge to the police department freezers I mean to the police department so that they will know that it was him and that they missed out on him it's quite an interesting story um, I think obviously it's very clear that the morality of the man is, is not acceptable I guess that's a given um, um, <clears throat> first, for the most obvious reasons, really. I mean, it violates do unto others. You know, you don't go around murdering other people or other people's children and eating them. Uh, well, presumably you don't want that to happen to you. You don't want to be murdered and eaten, and you don't want any kids you might have to be murdered and eaten either. So that's pretty basic. It violates the um, golden rule. Um, the other reason, I suppose, probably related to that is that it's what I would call a non-scalable behaviour. In other words, if everybody behaved like that, it would not work. So um, that's all you can do, really, I think, in terms of being moral, is to have a, a scalable behaviour. In other words, a behaviour where if anyone had that, beha everyone had that behaviour, people would at least be able to get along. You know, you just it's just an obvious. Um, it's an obvious uh, consequence of the golden rule, I suppose. So um, his behaviour is certainly not moral in any sense. 
Um, I was interested to notice a few of the responses were focusing on the fact that he left the fridge to the police. Um, I don't know what his reasoning might have been for that. I mean, we're assuming that he wanted to gloat about it after his death, you know, ha ha ha, you didn't catch me. But um, that's only one interpretation of it, and I guess that's another point that Grappling Ignorance was trying to make, that we assume a lot of things about what people thought and why they did things when we don't know. He could also have been leaving it because he no longer needed the food, because it's, according to the description in the story, he's very uh, careful with his food and doesn't waste anything. Um, and he wanted, I don't know what he wanted them to do with it, but the other, set, the other point is that gi giving that up to the police identifies him and gives some kind of uh, closure, if you like, to the parents of the children who've been taken away and eaten. It's not exactly nice to be told that your child's actually been eaten, but at least you know that you don't need to keep looking for him or her. So, in some sense, you could argue that he was maybe trying to show the parents of his victims some kind of um, some some kind of respect, I suppose. I mean, that, no, that's not really what I mean. But um, anyway, um, uh, and that's pretty much all there is to say about those stories. I think um, I think it's pretty clear the man's morality is was wrong. It was was not acceptable. And I guess the way I'm judging that is by the person's behaviour's impact on other people and society in general, obviously. That's probably pretty obvious, really. Um, because um, I don't believe... I'm an atheist uh, myself. I don't believe in biblical morality. I don't believe that anything the Bible says about morality is necessarily any good, apart from the fact that the Golden Rule apparently gets gets repeated in there. It's what predates the Bible apparently by a long time, but it's in there as well, apparently. So, um, it won't it, it won't be right about anything, any issues of morality except by coincidence, is what I'm getting at. Um, so I thought that was quite, a, it was really interesting to give, be given the opportunity to think about those stories in a bit of detail and just come to some conclusions on what I regard as right and wrong. And, um, and it was interesting to see other people's uh, conclusions, except I didn't obviously wasn't able to follow them very well when um, grappling ignorance mishmashed them up into his um, into his little critique. Anyway, that was uh, interesting interesting thing to talk about, and uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity to think about it and respond. I'm Chris Blue NZ.